This is a mini lecture on creating a private macro. We're building off of the first two parts of this three-part series. And what we're doing here is creating a macro that runs in the background. And this way the user doesn't have to click any buttons, go to anything on the ribbon, execute anything. All they have to do is just select a different beta and it should run in the background. Now you'll notice that I took out the ActiveX scroll bars that we had in the previous part. And the reason I did that is there seems to be a conflict in terms of the ActiveX generating that number, that value in the cell, and the macro in understanding that number. It's an unresolved issue with my Microsoft, um, so let's go ahead and just use it in a different form here. So what I've done is I've created drop-down boxes for both of these items. So the, this limits the user, so I'd say 1.1 for example. Or I might say, go ahead and put this at a smaller amount, say 8%. Okay, what I've got here is the basic portfolio decision, letting Excel choose the weights. The weights must sum to 1, and the portfolio beta should be equal to what the user cho chooses. Right now, nothing is happening um, because we haven't put in a private macro. We do have the solver macro in this worksheet, so it, we can call it. So let me show you how to put a visual, in using Visual Basic, put a private macro inside of a worksheet. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to click on the worksheet that we want to embed here. So we're going to click on that so it's connected, and that connects whatever we're doing with that worksheet. And then we're going to say Worksheet. Now what you notice here is that it has a default selection change, etc. It seems to work better if we take this word selection out. And it works just fine, and I think we find more success with that. Now there are different ways to code this. We could actually just do two lines and be done with it. But what I want to do is kind of step through it so you understand some of the working parts of this. So the first thing we do is we're going to identify a variable called key cells, and that's going to be a range of cells. It could be a range can be one cell, and it could be hundreds of cells. And in fact, we're just going to have two cells in it, C4 and C5. And key cells is a name a lot of programmers use when they're referring to an objective type of thing where we have we're focusing on a particular cells. So there's nothing magical about that, but you will see that variable name used um, by other programmers. Then set key cells equal to the range, and now we put in the range in quotes C4 colon C5 and the quote and the parentheses. So now we've told it what key cells mean. So anytime we use key cells from now on, it refers to that range. Now this next command is rather obtuse, but when you see the whole command, maybe it'll make a little more sense. If not, so I'm working in the negative so that I can tie you up a not. So if not application dot intersect key cells so this is a function within VBA, just like average is a function within Excel. So intersect is an application or a function within Excel. And then we're going to have range, second argument of this function, target dot address, close this out, skip a space, underscore so we can continue on the next line is nothing, then call solver demo and if. This is all there is to it. Now let me explain what this the last set of lines mean. It basically says that if you make a change anywhere in the worksheet except for C4 and C5, it's going to do nothing. That is, it's not going to run the solver. It's only when you mess with key cells you make a change in one of those, 
that it's going to actually call solver demo, which is the macro. So if this is all set up and if it works, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Then if I make a change here, 1.2, and you see it work, and it worked. Same thing goes with the percentage. So if I make any change in one of these two cells, then it triggers the macro. You could tell by the spinning round ball, and you've got it working. So this is a private macro. If we look at macros, you won't see it. All you'll see is solver demo, which is a public macro. It's public because it's viewable in all these dialog boxes. The only way to see the private macro is to go into Visual Basic, go to the sheet, and click on that. It's attached to the sheet. Okay, so that is a private macro. You can use private macros to do quite a number of things. You can have it do a welcome on a worksheet. So as soon as somebody opens up a worksheet, it does something. It says hello or something. You could use a private macro anytime someone answers some of these um, input, input box questions and cells go in. You can have a macro that will perform certain calculations as you go along and, and do things that the other macro won't do. You can have a private macro call another macro or do something to the worksheet, such as change the coloring and so forth, all without the user's control. So the private macro is in the control of the designer, not the user. And the private macro can call another a macro. You can call any number of macros. So you can see how you can put these things together and make it easier for the user. If we did an ideal user interface, we wouldn't show this information right here, portfolio beta difference, and we'd probably put it out of sight on another worksheet, such just like we did with the list there on another worksheet. Um, but we'd have to refer to them in the macro where to find them, so we'd have to provide the accurate address for those. So that's a private macro.